Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Monday. Okay guys, sorry that we didn't have hot messy topics or our New Jersey recap this morning. Jason's birthday was yesterday. We had so much fun, but I wasn't able to actually watch the show until this morning. So hopefully you guys understand, but we will be back later this week in order to um, catch up on all of those things. We'll be doing the lives. But in the meantime, I wanna hear what you guys think about Real Housewives in New Jersey. So I posted another video about that. But now we're back to talk about some Vanderpump Rules slash Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So before we jump in, you guys know how this works. If you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And also, don't forget to check out, I am throwing my 31st birthday party. That's going to be on Saturday, July 6th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern in downtown Charleston on King Street. We're going to have Monica Garcia from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Daisy from Below Deck Sailing Yacht, and also a lot of other Bravo liberties that you might recognize. So RSVP to ASST at upandatomlive.com to reserve your spot. With that, let's jump right in. All right, guys, we have to start with the Tom Schwartz of it all. <laughs> Thank you to Reality Blurb. Tom Schwartz offered a couple of unexpected picks when questioned about who was most authentic during the 11th season of Vanderpump Rules on a podcast last week. Now, while also reacting the opening of something about her, sharing where he stands with his ex-wife, Katie Maloney, and gushing over his girlfriend, Sophia Scoro, Schwartz admitted that one particular ex-couple showed their lives exactly as they were while in production on the recently aired episodes last year. Who is the most authentically themselves on this season of Vanderpump Rules? Taylor Strecker asked Schwartz on an episode of her podcast, Taste of Taylor. He said Tom and Ariana. Schwartz then agreed with Taylor that season 11 was really just exactly how it was going down. It was just raw. It was so intense. But during another moment on the podcast, also via Vanderpod recaps on Instagram, Shorts admitted that he's so proud of something about her. I'm so proud. Her and Ariana have been, I don't want to sound like a kiss ass, but I've been to something about her three times. I popped in and there and they're grinding it out. And according to Shorts, he and Katie are still totally amicable about their split. I still love Katie, not like in love, but I'll always be a fan of Katie and she's great. I pretty much have full custody of the dogs, but whenever I need them, you know, she's always there for me. So accommodating. And we were just worried about stressing them out, going back and forth every week. But as they continue to co-manage their pups years after their breakup, Short said that the two of them have gotten to a place of friendly banter. She busts my balls, and I like having my balls busted by her. But as for Sophia, he said that they're still hanging before noting that he was keeping this romance a little more close to his chest than past flings. She's awesome. She's a badass. That's what he said about her. Now. Speaking of which, I also wanted to just bring this up. I have to play this for you guys. This is Jax talking about Lisa's recent comments. Just in case you guys didn't hear it. Recently did um, Not Skinny Not Fat's podcast. And on one of the clips that I saw on um, her IG today, it was Lisa saying that she thinks that James Kennedy is the most interesting reality star that she's worked with. And then she took it back or she didn't take it back, but she was like, well, James and Stassi. What do you think about that, Jax? <laughs> really? You're I'm a little so upset mad that you were named. <laughs> because like she used to tell me that I was the most interesting. Like she's like, you are reality tv gold. i had to save this for the podcast to get your actual reaction i'm a little taken back but i'm also not surprised lisa just kind of she's lisa you know and i i'm a little taken back because we've had some kind of one-on-ones but i think down deep she has to say certain things i feel like i feel like that deep down i'm her favorite she just doesn't <laughs> want to say it you, you are still the number one guy in the group. I will always be the number one guy in the group, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. I, I uh, wanted to get your reaction. I, hey, no, that's fine. I don't. Um, uh, I I think 
I think they're both successful, but I don't understand interesting. I think they're just normal people. I don't think they've done anything to say why. Oh, they're interesting. James is great TV, and so is Stassi. Oh, yeah. But so are you, and so am I. Sheesh. Yeah, everybody's great TV. I just, <laughs> I was just, I want something in particular about all the people that she's worked with on Housewives, The Valley. Why are they? Give me examples. That's why. I, that's why I wanted your reaction. I, I would like the example. I'm like, oh, because if you can justify that to me, great. But you can't just <laughs> say names without saying, okay, this is why. You are hilarious. You're so I'm butthurt. butthurt. I'm a little butthurt. <laughs> we said butthurt at the same. Time. Um, I'm butthurt. You are so butthurt. Maybe I'm just getting old. You know, maybe it's just time for me to pass the torch, which I already did pass the torch. Mm, okay. So going back to it now, he then addressed his Hawaii mugshot and shared more details behind the story. He said, my TMZ mugshot was not good. Now, Brittany explained that the arrest took place on a cast trip when production allowed cast members to stay a few extra days of filming. And now that's not allowed anymore because of this Hawaii trip. Like if we did a group trip, we have to come straight home because of what Jax did. She said that the sunglasses that Jax gifted her during a booze cruise was the first brand name thing that she's ever gotten, but then officers later handcuffed him as she had no idea what was going on. That was the most terrifying thing, and I had no idea what was happening. And Jax looks at me and turns around as he's being walked out by the freaking police officer and says, don't tell anybody. And Jax claimed that he had a severe diva mentality at the time, and he felt he could do no wrong. But at the time, he went to an ATM to get a cash like payout for the sunglasses, but the line was so long and the booze, booze cruise was leaving in 10 minutes. So he decided to take them. And Brittany was upset that Jax let her take a selfie with the shades and send it to her mom. But after TMZ picked up the story, everyone started calling Brittany, but Jax told her not to tell anyone. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but here, Shot. That was. <laughs> I was not going right, to talk hey, about this. Hey, but here we go. Cue the flash. Cue the flashback <laughs> of Jackson's mugshot. <laughs> that was, guys. Oh, you know what? We didn't have a podcast back then. Let's talk about it because that day in Hawaii. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, that might be listening. It was. It was all covered on one of our seasons of Vanderpump Rules. But we did a group vacation to Hawaii. What your- Production actually allowed us to stay what do we say like two or three days off camera and, now we- and that is not allowed anymore because of this hawaii trip like if we do a group trip we have to come straight home because of what Jax did so anyways we're in hawaii and it's the last day and Jax and i are on a booze cruise um, our second one we're going on our second one and we're sitting at dicks and he comes back with these tiffany sunglasses i never i didn't really have name brand things or anything at that point like it was one of the first like things that i had ever been given that like one of the nicest gifts i had ever been given <laughs> kind of find out we're sitting at the bar and all of a sudden police officers come up and handcuff jacks while we're sitting at the bar i have absolutely no idea what was going on that was the most terrifying thing i had no clue what was happening and jacks looks at me and turns around as he's being walked out by the freaking police officers and says don't tell anybody don't tell anybody wait well speaking of another secret that probably was not supposed to get out there but right now it's still a report and a rumor I want to hear what you guys have to say about this, but Taste of Reality said, allegedly Kyle Richards is upset with Dorit Kimsley, who may or may not have hooked up with her husband, Mauricio. Now, rumors, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, uh, around the self-proclaimed fashionista and Mo, aren't anything new. However, the following blind item revealed from Crazy Days and Nights teased another new level of drama and deceit between the frenemies during filming. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills ladies are seemingly going through it, and it's no longer about the text to read leaked to the network about her friend. Continuing in the voice of Meredith Marks, you want me to go there with the husband? Blind item revealed. At this point, the snack housewife has to be upset that she decided to come back. She is just being hammered by everyone during filming, and especially by the women who think the snack was hooking up with her ex. Obviously, they're saying snack because Dorit's nickname is Dorito. Now, in case you missed it, both Kyle and Mauricio and Dorit and her husband, PK, announced separations, and Kyle and Dorit have remained in the family homes. Mo purchased a multi-million dollar condo in West Hollywood, and PK, on the other hand, has been living at the Beverly Hills Hotel, per reports from the Daily Mail. With Kyle and Dorit going through very public separations, the Beverly Hills OG thinks that they should be there for each other, and unfortunately, that's not where they're at right now in our relationship. We're both going through different but similar situations, so it is unfortunate that we're in this position. Now, Bravo TV fans have reacted with three in particular. One saying, am I so naive that I don't think Dorit or Mo would do that to Kyle? Why is nobody assuming Kyle cheated with PK? And then lastly, PK and Mo at least had the decency to move out so their wives and kids didn't have to move. Are you listening, Sandoval and Jax? Hmm. 
All right, guys, I want to hear what your thoughts are. So pop off in the comment section. If you guys are not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time. Love you guys.